Well, guys, we have some fantastic news. Arsenal fans will be waking up today and seeing that Gabriel Jesus, Jesus, however you want to pronounce his name, is back in training. And the rumour is he should be ready to face Manchester United after the Fulham game, which is obviously coming up somewhat soon. We've got um, Fulham on Saturday and then the following Sunday. It's a lot of time for him to be training and getting back to full fitness. He should be ready to take part in that game. Whether whether he'll play the whole game or not, it's I mean, we don't know how far along the recovery he is, but he has been spotted in training and it's such a huge, huge boost for the squad. Let me just mute this, otherwise it could blast your eardrums. But every time Arsenal go into training, there's always people watching and trying to spot who's there, who isn't there. And we do have a list of names that aren't in training today, which is obviously interesting. We'll go on to that in a minute. But seeing Jesus there is just huge. I think obviously we're going to miss him when he's not there, but we've we've missed... Look, Nketiah has done a good enough job, okay? Havertz, when he has played there, he plays a very different type of forward role, but he's done well for us too. But there's something about... I mean, it's it's almost like the attitude of the team is different. The press is different. The the amount of effort that you see the 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 players going going through just to get back the ball. You know, it it feels like Jesus is just the focal point of that, and um, very very exciting to see him coming back. So in terms of the players missing from training, Tierney not featuring, Lukonga not featuring, Tavares as well, Balogun. And Rob Holding, which is really quite interesting because I'm feeling very, I guess, a little bit um, unsure about Rob Holding leaving. There's been this, this I guess it was from a, a podcast or some sort of interview. I haven't watched the entire thing, but um, there was a moment after we won the Community Shield against Man City where Rob Holding saw that Kivior was being his usual shy self, I guess, and he wouldn't get pictures with the trophy. He wouldn't hold the trophy. And um, he went over to Kivior and, and asked him, look, I'll come with you. And, and they got the pictures together. And I, I just, I, I read that and thought, oh my God, selling Rob Holding for, let's say three, five, eight million. Like, why, why? When he's such a popular person in the team and can still provide some adequate squad cover um, but maybe I'm just being a little bit sentimental and not thinking logically, you know, wages wise, we don't really need him. But anyway, I'm, I'm going off topic here. I just I feel bad about Rob Holding leaving because he's, he's a really nice guy, isn't he? Um, Kieran Tierney as well. This this is a really strange one because I was so certain that he'd play one more season. I, I know he's not going to be here forever, obviously, and he, he will be leaving next year. I'm pretty certain of that. But to go now when Zinchenko is is clearly having fitness issues and has had fitness issues. Tavares is also a player that's going to be leaving. What what are we doing in this left back position? Timber, who has been playing left back until he picked up his injury, he's now out for six to nine months, which of course is awful. Tommy Yasu's picked up a red card. I mean, I guess Tommy Yasu is seen as a better fit than Tierney. I think the problem is, okay, and if you if you really think about it, Tierney was not a Mikel Arteta signing. And typically we don't play, since Arteta has taken over, with old school wing backs, proper left backs and right backs. Since Arteta has come in, he started with, with Tierney and um, Bellerin and players like that. But we've shifted over to what we see with Man City, for example, actually using taller, more physical players, actually centre-backs in these w wide positions and inverting into midfield or even seeing Partey play at right back. You know, it's it's quite fascinating. And I think Kivior is ahead of him as well in that left back role. I think you you could even see Declan Rice just shifting into that left back role, just like Granite Xhaka did. I, honestly, you can't put it past Arteta. He clearly doesn't feel like Tierney is needed. Lukonga, we talked about yesterday. It seems very likely he will be leaving. Brighton seem to be the likely destination at the moment. And Tavares, it could be Aston Villa. We'll be talking about that one as well. Um, Balogun. What is going on with Balogun? This is starting to get a little bit frustrating for me because it's very clear that he wants to go and he doesn't want to fight for, for his position. And I, I kind of understand that. If Nketi is ahead of you and you've had such a good season, he must be a bit frustrated. 
But it does seem like Monaco are close to agreeing a fee with Arsenal. This is the problem, okay? Balogun, I'm sure, had pretty much agreed terms with Inter. I'm pretty sure he would have been happy to go to Chelsea and earn a, a big upgrade on his contract. And I'm sure he's happy to go back to France as well. But the problem has always been that Arsenal, for once, are holding out for a proper fee, for a proper amount of money that we deserve. And I'm fed up, especially over the last decade, of Arsenal just being a feeder club, a selling club, and, and kind of just accepting fees, getting bullied a little bit when players have been worth so much more than what they've gone for. And I really, really hope we stick to this because this is really good to see. If Balogun's going, fine, get the most money possible and don't get bullied into an early sale when we can sell him in five, six, seven days time. It, it doesn't have to be today. And I think Arsenal are really, you know, that they're, they're, they're putting their foot down this time and saying, look, we know you want to leave. We're happy for you to leave but we are getting the fee we deserve. We're seeing players like Hoyland going to United for over 70 million. Balogun has done more than Hoyland, okay? Balogun is further ahead than some strikers we've seen going for big, big money in recent years. We should be getting a strong fee. Anything less than 50 million, I will be disappointed with. It does seem like it will be less than 50, but he's not going for 25 plus 5 in bonuses and add-ons like it, it's it's going to be a decent fee and there's a reason for it 21 goals in 34 starts he's a good striker look at his stats okay he's a promising striker it's not going to work out at Arsenal but I I really really hope they put in a buyback clause or a sell-on clause just a way to get something if he does reach those heights because at the end of the day He's come through Arsenal. He is an Arsenal man. He's 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 going to go on to do great things, I'm sure of it. And if he does, we should get rewarded for that, okay? Let's move on now. Pepe, what is going on with Pepe? We've got Fabrice Hawkins here. Let me go ahead and translate that for you guys because I'm not very fluent in French. I can do a little bit. Um, we've heard Pepe could be going to Besiktas. We heard that he turned them down. Three-year contract denied. Saudi were, were in talks with him over the last few weeks, but it does seem likely that he will be going to Saudi now. Um, we don't know which club it is, but they have absolutely been in touch. There is going to be a transfer fee. Again, Arsenal holding strong. Pepe is an Arsenal player. Whether other teams like it or not, he is still an Arsenal player and he has still done very well for the club. Okay, I'm sorry that People seem to disagree with me there and people th seem to think he was an absolute flop. For the price, I would understand that, yes, he didn't live up to the £72 million price tag. But if you look at other examples, you look at, you know, Sancho and, and Mudrik and there's other players, of course. Pepe has blown them out of the water, stats-wise. We should be getting a fee. We should be selling him, not, not mutually terminating his contract. That's not going to happen. So... The transfer fee is going to be the key here and whether or not he wants to go to the Saudi league. Here is confirmation though. Well, I say confirmation. It's all, it's obviously reported and rumours, but he refused to sign with Besiktas. I'm guessing either the money just wasn't enough or he doesn't want to go to Turkey and that's fine. That's fine. I'm guessing no one really wants to go to the Saudi league. I don't think Neymar woke up and was like, damn, I really want to play in, Sa in the Saudi league. But when they get offered life-changing money, and a chance to go and play with some of the other big stars that have gone. It makes it a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? But uh, one year left on his current deal. If we don't sell him now, we will lose him for free next season. But either way, I don't think Pepe has a future at Arsenal. Even though, genuinely, if we were, we were going to terminate his contract right now, I'd almost rather just let him have his last season. He's on relatively high wages, I understand that. But he could still do quite well for us. And this is the talk about Tavares. There were strong links with Forrest. That broke down. Aston Villa do seem to be most interested at the moment. And I've heard, okay, now it's just rumours, but we could be getting up to 30 million for him. And I just want to remind Arsenal fans that this, this deal with Tavares, when it happened, it was kind of out of the blue. It was 8 million or something. 8 million pounds. 8 million euros, maybe. It's a very, very good amount of profit if he does go to Aston Villa. And the thing is, Tavares is quite unique. He's he's a bit of a crazy nut. <laughs> he he doesn't 
He doesn't play a predictable style of football, does he? I, I can't imagine you're going to find another Tavares that's had Premier League experience and now has had League 1 uh, experience. I hate saying League 1, League 1, uh, over in France. And obviously he played in, in Portugal as well. He's got good experience and he's physically unreal. Like one, one of the most physically gifted players I think I've ever seen in an Arsenal shirt. And you've, you've heard the rumours, I'm sure, that you know when they do the training on the machines and they test the players and they score them, Tavares was consistently finishing at the top of everyone. He's one of the fastest players, one of the strongest players. He's got the hardest shot in the squad. Ramsdale said it himself. Out of all of the players, he doesn't want to face a shot from Tavares. It stings his hands, okay? So he's a good good football player. I don't think he's going to work at Arsenal. It's very clear. Let him go for, for good money. But looking at the um, the listed Arsenal squad at the moment, of course, Raya has joined. He's number 22. We still have a few players listed here. Uh, Tavares, number 20, despite the fact, of course, that Jorginho is actually the number 20. Um, we've still got Pepe listed here as number 19, but of course, Trossard has that number. Balogun is listed, and of course, Runarsson and Marquinhos out on loan. It's just worth noting that the club clearly haven't made the decision to exclude them from the website, at least. And this is normally quite a telltale sign. Telltale, telltale. <laughs> My brain. It's it's quite clear when a when a player isn't part of the plans when they're not given a squad number, when they're not included in, in the team on the website. Here's Tierney as well. Um, oh, I don't know if it's a good idea. I really don't. Um, this is just something I wanted to show you guys because it's, it's really quite funny. I'm just going to turn it down. Oh, hang on. It's on mute, isn't it? I've accidentally muted the site. Unmute. After you went down to 10 men. Great win, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Great win, I'm so happy. Who does this remind you of, guys? Who Who is this? Ten men. Great win, I'm so happy. <laughs> I mean, it's Pep, isn't it? Under any you win. <laughs> he was fuming with that red card. He really was, but we got the win. Um, and last but not least, we do have a little bit of money coming our way. Mavropanos has signed for West Ham, ex-Arsenal, with a sell-on clause as well. So um, when we sold him to Stuttgart, we put in a sell-on clause and he has gone to West Ham for around that 20 million mark, which means Arsenal are going to get a nice little kickback. Two million pounds, I've heard. Um, I mean, it's not it's not a crazy amount of money, but a 10% sell-on clause, quite happy with that. And it's, it's just more money coming into the club. Um, and we clearly need to raise money because we've spent a lot. We've got to make sure that we're clear on FFP. But honestly, I hope Mavropanos does well. Um, I, I remember watching him at Old Trafford. I, it wasn't like his debut, I don't think, but one of the early games in his Arsenal career, he came on to play against United and I thought, God, he's, he's pretty good, this guy. And of course, he, he's gone on to be linked with plenty of clubs over his career since leaving Arsenal. Stuttgart just seemed the right fit for him, I guess. But now he's coming to West Ham and actually... I think he's going to do very well for them. He's a good player. So um, best of luck to him. Thank you for watching this video, guys. I am going to be doing some career mode content very soon. I know I keep saying it, but I'm working on some mods um, and I'm having to reinstall everything, which is fun. So we should be back. I'm thinking of doing like a mini series with Luton, seeing if we can compete in the Premier League and maybe just not get relegated. Let me know if you're interested in that. But for now, thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.